Welcome to the meeting of uh, July 7th. Uh, signing of the warrant, Brian? Move. Second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Bill. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Approval of minutes June 16th. Motion. Brian. Second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Bill. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Invitation to speak? Okay, hearing none, we'll go to our first uh, appointment. Uh, before us is Brian Chang. Uh, this is a application for transfer of the common visual license issued to Milford Sports Club Incorporated doing business as Docks Sports and Bar and Grill, map 33, block 98, lot 2, 324 East Main Street. Uh, to 12 Baskets LLC doing business as Sky Buffet at map 33, block 98, lot 2, 324 East Main Street. Transfer of existing license, common victualler. Once again, 12 Baskets Incorporated, doing business as uh, Sky Buffet, 324 Main Street. Seven days operation, Monday through Thursday, 11 to 11. Friday, 11 to 1. Saturday and Sunday, 7 to 12 midnight. And let me see if there's anything. Else. And the last page is the uh, department head forum. All the officials, uh, nothing, uh, everything is in order. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to you, Barry. So, tell us what you plan on opening and all that stuff, the new place. And Brian Chenk, and um, we're presenting uh, Sky Buffet. And uh, I expect to open maybe uh, after we get approval by uh, the end of this week or beginning of next week. Why, how, the name... Uh, 12 baskets, where did that come from? From the Bible. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. And you'll have a, uh, the occupancy load is 337? Yes. Big, big place. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brian? Um, are you, um, Getting the, uh, the, the the liquor license issue resolved, is that all taken care of? Um, no, but we are working on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you looking to open before you get that resolved? Yes. Okay. And then you just serve food until you can? Yeah, food and soft drink. Okay. And, um, just what's the chance for my customer to bring their own? Uh, can't do it. You can do it? Okay. Uh, we, have, we have bylaws against okay. that. No, okay. No, it's okay. Yep. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, I know the... Um, situation with the license was was unfortunate but um, I think the time frame is coming up isn't it that uh, that has to be resolved or else we'll have a hearing on it uh, next, next through next year, right? I believe September uh, September 17th yeah. that's correct but September 17th of what uh, of this year yeah. I've no, had I'm conversations with the various attorneys involved and they are very close to resolving all issues there so okay. we hope to if not the next meeting probably the first meeting in August that should be resolved okay all right and we'll have that on our agenda correct yeah okay yes. Good. all right well I, you know I wish you the uh, best of luck I Thank mean you had a nice operation at the the Imperial and um, I remember when you came before us you know to do this transfer it looked as though you're gonna have a very nice nice restaurant and um, uh, situation so it's unfortunate that it's been delayed but Wish you the very best and um, hope for continued success. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I don't have any issues with the uh, department heads' uh, feedback. No outstanding taxes, no issues, no concerns by police and fire, um, building commissioner, town planner. I also wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The motion. Thank you, Dana. I'll move. I'll motion second. By Brian. Approve. Second by Bill that we approve the uh, transfer. Any discussion? All in favor? Oppose? Good luck, okay? You. I'll see you Bye. soon. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Brian. Okay, uh, let's see, John. John? How are you, John? Okay, next we have the Building Commissioner, John Erickson. I had asked uh, John a couple of months ago to, to begin the Neighborhood Task Force meetings, and uh, he has, and uh, he has a report to us tonight, and then uh, any questions that the board may have hit for him. So, go ahead, John. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, the Neighborhood Task Force has continued um, as it's been going since 
I believe the f um, late summer of 2011. And, you know, we're out there now doing more of the same. I, in the beginning, we were walking the, you know, the most problematic neighborhoods and finding boatloads of problems and, you know, dealing with them um, fairly effectively. <coughs> uh, following that first summer, we got the nuisance bylaw that was signed into, um, general bylaw of the town, which gave us more, you know, more tools to deal with these problem properties. Uh, following, following that, we began working on the periodic inspections that are required by state building code. So we've gotten into hundreds of multifamily properties since that time. And um, we're actually really pleased to find that there were very, very few major problems. Um, single digits in the number of illegal apartments or anything like that. So I, I think overall the task force has been very effective. and. Right now, we're just continuing more of the same. We, you know, we walk the neighborhoods every week um, during the during the nice weather, or during the, sometimes the not so nice, but not during the winter. Uh, and it's representatives from, you know, my department, my assistant, myself, and Board of Health, police, and fire. So, uh, you know, I think it's been successful, and we're just going to continue doing more of the same. You know, if anybody has any specific complaints of any particular street or even single residents, we um, we welcome it. And it's, you know, it's more of a concentration of the problem properties because it's an extension of, or it's, it's exactly what the zoning department does every single day. Yeah. And John, the, uh, no, and I think that's good. I think when we first, you know, began this again, that we said it would be an ongoing thing. It, it could never be a situation where we drop it. I think this, you know, the, the good majority, 90% uh, of the landlords are, uh, you know, good people, but I think some of the, landlords who are absentee landlords, I think that's where we get into some trouble. And I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times it could be an education process, as we've talked about. You know, maybe someone doesn't know, someone, there's a violation and all that. So I think you educate, you let people uh, be informed of the, of the laws and, and what they're in violation of, and in 99% of the cases, it's resolved. And then you have the other few that I think you have to, you know, be on them and do what you have to do to let them, you know, conform to the uh, to the bylaws, and because I think it's it doesn't take long for a house to start being run down, and then the neighborhood and all that. So I think it's important. I think the residents like that, you know. Yeah, I think so too. And I think most, as you said, 98, 99 percent of the landlords do want to comply and cooperate. And then you always have those few that, you know, you have to spend an inordinate amount of time on, and and you know, go so far as to go to district court and file a complaint, which. You know, we do when we hmm. when we can't get results in any other manner. Now, as like before, when you go to some place and you there are violations, you write the report up, then you give us a copy of it, right? So there's nothing like in that as far as the past month or so, any violations that you've uh, found? Um, yeah, there are ongoing. There are always ongoing violations. I didn't include a report okay. um, for this purpose because it's really just a lot more of the same. Okay. You know, I did a summary of you know how many were resolved. Uh, and I don't remember those numbers specifically, but we seem to be resolving more than we're opening, which, you know, I think points that were, shows that we're pointing and they're heading in the right direction. Yep. And I can certainly, you know, include, uh, do an up-to-date report of. Sure. Okay. What's the nuisance uh, bylaw that we have, how, how's that been working? Uh, that's been working very effective. You know, prior, prior to that, from a, from a general bylaw and zoning aspect, we didn't have any tools to deal with the trash, debris, um, miscellaneous auto parts, um, basically just junk. Um, the Board of Health had regulations, but this just this just gives it, uh, I guess, a lot more teeth, um, and, and it gives it gives our department jurisdiction to work on it where previously, you know, sim similar provisions, but not nearly as specific or as um, uh, as strong. I think. Okay, I, I know the other day we talked a little bit, and I, we talked about. Some of the signs are like illegal signs. Like uh, I know you said you addressed many of those in the past month or so. Yeah, in the past in the past two months, we noticed again, which seems to be the most recurring area. But Main Street pops up with numerous temporary signs, flags, banners, and we realize it's an attempt by the business owners to generate business. But you know, our, our zoning bylaw is very specific in prohibiting those. Uh, so we work on those literally every single week. But you know, in the last month or two, we've we've made a concentrated effort on Main Street because it just, it, you know, appeared to be so egregious, um, seemingly overnight. I'm sure it wasn't, but you know, one day it just, it just 
you know, caught our attention more than any other day. So, you know, we always work on it. We work on those um, illegal temporary signs every single week. Sure. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> it, you know, I'm sure that the board members don't have questions, but like on Main Street, you know, maybe work with Larry, the town administrator, as far as um, just the clutter of, like, signs on those windows, you know. It just doesn't, a person going through the town, the main thoroughfare, it just doesn't, doesn't present a, a nice professional, aesthetically pleasing um, forefront. So I think the more you can do as far as education, uh, working with those people, the, uh, uh, in many of those places, they're, they're renters, right? They don't own the building, right? Uh, in many, yes. Okay. Just, you know, letting them know that it's not appropriate, it doesn't look good, it detracts from the main street, and, uh, you know, whatever, I know it's difficult, but, but whatever we can do as far as, you know, informing the uh, tenants that it's not proper, it doesn't look, I mean, some of these windows, I mean, there's, there are no spaces. I mean, it, there'll be cardboard signs, uh, you know, handwritten things, and it's just, uh, it just doesn't look good. And uh, I know we've done a lot on Main Street with the facade program to have uniformity in the past, consistency, and it just seems that, you know, once again, if you don't, uh, if you're not on top of it all the time, if it's not a priority, then it, it seems to be lessened and, and then it gets to be run down. So I appreciate your, your work on that and continued work on that, okay? We will. Okay. And uh, now, unregistered vehicles, 58, I think, seems to be a lot, but I think this is less than before, some of the reports before. Um, honestly, I didn't compare them for this okay. for this report, but I, I will. Yeah. From my recollection, I think it's a little, even though it's, you know, still 58, but it seems to be a little bit less than what we had before. All right. Um, Brian? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, you know, as I looked over the uh, itemization that you had of all the different inspections and the um, uh, permitting uh, that was raised, I mean, there's no question that your office has been busy. Um, do you see uh, an uptick of, of development or, or, or business activity um, I don't know, last couple of years, three years maybe? Oh, absolutely. If I, if I, yeah. if I, I could do a quick report, um, and I will, but the last two years have told, I mean, the, the year 2013 totally dominated the, the previous five, and I, I had run a report about a year and a half ago on that, and um, this year has not slowed down one bit. It, as you see from the numbers. And, and the projects seem to be um, more substantial as well as just um, keeping up the same numbers. So um, it looks as though the major um, increase on the uh, building fees, as you indicate, was the uh, Milford Regional expansion. Yeah, um, the Milford Regional expansion was by far the biggest project. And um, So yeah, so when I looked at this sheet here, the fees collected, under uh, building commercial industrial, it's 302,000 to 303,000. So that must fall into that category. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it brings you up to about 470 total. Um, interesting, it looks as though uh, single families, we had six, six building permits so far this calendar year for, for new houses. No, that's not correct. We've had way more than that. Okay. I believe. No, you're right. It is it is six, but in, as a separate total is a new PRD unit, which would be like a Zane Ridge or a Walden Woods. So it's a separate category, but it's you know. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, not, you, not technically a single family, but yeah, you get your plan residential. Sure. That that's up to sixteen, but you know, freestanding uh, single family dwellings. I I I read it as six. No, um, you're you're correct in that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you know. Compared to 09 or, or 10, uh, you know, six is is an increase. Um, yeah, in in one of those calendar years, we had nine combined between PRDs and single families, so wow. yeah. it's certainly an increase. Yeah. So I mean, it's good to see the you know the the, the activity um, being generated, um, and there's a lot of. Um, additions, demolitions, renovations, that kind of stuff on here that shows up as well, which um, 
is nice to see the utilization and the improvement of existing properties because, you know, at the build-out level that we're at right now, um, we really need to, uh, you know, make sure that the properties we do have um, are fully utilized. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I was impressed by the numbers. Um, and, uh, you know, I know the activity is there. I see you guys on Main Street, <laughs> you know, going from spot to spot. So, um, you know, just, just keep up the good work. Be well, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How are you doing, John? Good, um, thank you. Yeah, I guess uh, the, the, I'm not willing to uh, claim success with the task force. I know that it's uh, what keeps um, the noncompliance issues from just overwhelming us, right? If you even are staying even, that, that, that sometimes uh, on a given month can be a success. But I just wanted to focus on that aspect of it. From the task force standpoint, uh, how often are you uh, have you met in the last, uh, say, two months? Uh, once per week. Okay, so approximately yep. eight times. Yep. Okay, and w where are the task force priorities? I'm assuming that you're getting feedback from community members, from uh, residents, from calls and complaints that might come into the board of selectmen's office or other offices. Uh, are there priorities? Are there priority streets and areas which you're focused on, and that task force is focused on? Well, um, for any individual complaint that comes in, we go out and act on that more or less right away, that day, the next day, the following day. That's the building department. That's the building Separate department. Separate from the Separate task, from the task force. force. I'm talking about task force. Yeah. In task force, we're just going to the problem areas. And, you know, as you indicated, some of some of these are, you know, moving targets. They go away, they come back. What areas, though? I'm just um, curious. Water, water Street, Oliver Street primarily. And um, we, we did a sweep of Water Street, Oliver Street last week, and we're down to just two locations that had some issues. Okay. One was a single-family house, and then one was behind several multifamilies. Okay. Anything but, up on Prospect Heights up on the hill? Uh, we didn't hit Prospect Heights. Okay. Um, and where do you see yourself, based on where complaints and issues are arising, where do you see yourself in, in the next couple of months, the task force? I, um, I see the task force uh, going more towards completing the periodics that are that are due, periodic being the you know the every five year inspection that has to be done per state building code. Uh, that is a building topic, but um, a lot of life safety issues come up can come up during those inspections, uh, particularly smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, which are not um, my enforcement as the building commissioner. That's the fire department jurisdiction, and uh, it gives us a great look at you know what's there and what's supposed to be there. So, so task force, let me just make sure I understand it right. The task force is following up on the periodic apartment inspections rather than building and inspections? The task force is taking part in the periodics, yes. Okay, they are. Yes. They are. Okay. And, and because it's such a close look at, you know, the, the potential it, problem properties. Is there an area of town you see the task force concentrating in over the next couple of months? Um, no, actually, I'm open to suggestions if anybody sees any problem areas. No, I had asked, you know, originally that, you know, the Water Street area get some focus. I'm glad that it has, uh, and that's a great idea. I was just curious what its next plans were and what particular area of town where compliance issues seem to pop up a lot and you want to... Uh, well, we were, go we we're going to go with the, you know, focus on the periodics, um, you know, because they're important for the reasons I just noted, but also that gets us... Um, not in any particular planned rotation. It's, you know, however we can schedule them with the, with the tenants and the owners. It, it gives us a, um, you know, a broad perspective of the town. Okay. You know, it'll get us into the different neighborhoods. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Thank Thanks, you. Well, Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. I know today you, uh, the building on 11, the house on 11, 11 Temple Street was uh, raised, it was knocked down. Yes. And the yes. um, guy in the back of the room, uh, was uh, very instrumental in that. Matter of fact, we appropriated about 30,000 at town meeting, and with the help of Scott Christofuli, that uh, that price may be maybe cut in half. Yeah, that 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 price will be well below what we had appropriated. Um, you know, Scott approached me as I was writing the RFQ um, to ask if we wanted his department's assistance, and um, the, you know, the answer look, a, answer was absolutely. You know, I, I checked with town council and town accountant. Um, Board of Health went in and did a, um, you know, inspection for, for rodents and such, and I would estimate 
at a bare minimum, that saved the town ten thousand dollars. If I, I would probably guess it closer to fifth, closer to fifteen. Thanks, Scotty. Now, what's yeah. the plan going forward with that uh, piece of property, John? Well, with that piece of property, you know, they they knocked it down today. They'll be removing the debris throughout the rest of this week and, and grading it properly. Um, seeing it come down, it was um, it was in at least as poor of condition as I, you know, I had assessed it. Um, going forward, it'll be properly graded, and um, at that point, it's up to the discretion of uh, town officials what they want to do with it. Uh, in speaking with town council, he indicated that it. Um, it wouldn't even be um, considered to be marketed until after uh, the first of the year for sure. for, for, for legal aspects. Um, it could be auctioned off, is my understanding, and uh, a new single-family house uh, could be built. It would need, at a minimum, a special permit um, and possibly a variance. I, you know, I'd need you know town council's assessment on that. Um, but it was at the point where, regardless, it was going to need it needed to be knocked down, especially after seeing. You know the insides of it as it was torn down today. So um, to have been rebuilt at any point, you know whether this had had been taken by the town or not, would have needed at a minimum a special permit. Well, at least the, I'm sure the neighbors are happy because it was certainly a bad situation, and hopefully we can uh, continue to work on it. And then at the right time, if the board decides to, uh, it, I mean everything in the area is a one family, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. That's in the RB district. Sure. It's, it's strictly one family. Yeah. Um, a couple of the neighbors watched the you know the demolition today and were very relieved to see it come down. Um, and one you know expressed some some real sadness about the situation. But that was well yeah. you know sure looking at the situation from for living there for the past yeah. thirty years and how bad it was um, degraded. So I think it's a good situation going forward. All right. So maybe uh, in, in about two or three months, come back in again. Gladly. And give us another report, and maybe touch upon some of the questions that the board members have. Yeah. And we, you know, this is a priority, John. So we appreciate that. Appreciate the work of you, Laurie, the fire department going out, because at any one time things can change. So we just have to be on top of it, and hopefully <coughs> the residents will call the office when there's something wrong, and uh, you may get something from our office. But we appreciate the, uh, you know, the thorough job, and uh, this is something that has to be ongoing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, excuse yes. me one second. Uh, while John is here, do we want to discuss uh, 11 Sunset Drive? Sure. Um, if that's the board's inclination. Yeah. If not, that's fine. But I, I think it's you know, something town maybe. town council's uh, uh, letter? I did not get that memo. Oh, okay. I, I, think, I, I think I sent it to you, but that's okay. I, I can paraphrase. I looked for it if, if I, I can did. paraphrase what Jerry has to say. In fact, I was looking for it just now because it, yeah. you know, after the If you could give the board, by way of background, your role in it, and I can take it from there. I think. Sure. Yeah, we've been dealing with that as a zoning violation, uh, due to the fact that it's had a you know a extremely large tow truck parked intermittently at the premises for an ongoing basis. It would sh it would show up. We'd write him up. It would he'd pull it out. He'd come back in a month or two months or three months, um, and you know it was sort of detailed in the memo that I wrote. But we had a you know a very specific conversation and exchange of of letters on. The fact that it is a zoning violation and it it just can't stay it would leave and come back um, we filed a, a complaint in district court a couple months ago went before the magistrate and the magistrate gave him a certain amount of time to get rid of it get it in compliance and pay the fines that have been levied or it would go to trial um, I believe that deadline has come and gone and we're waiting for a trial date now from the court go ahead Rick Okay, the, the secondary issue became um, the Milford Police, Tom O'Laughlin, uh, issued a letter which I believe the board has, and there is an exception under the Milford Traffic Rules and Orders, uh, Section 10, that would permit the parking of the vehicle of that size, uh, not at the residence, but on street, um, if it was either registered or designated as an emergency vehicle. So the issue becomes here, it was not registered as one, is it designated as one? Um, the chief provided a letter from um, the uh, state police uh, lieutenant, the Massachusetts State Police, uh, indicating that the vehicle uh, owner is an emergency responder. So uh, basically we are in conflict. At that point I asked town council uh, at, so to look at both John's memo uh, and uh, the chief's memo. Uh, and uh, sought his uh, input. Uh, he also provided a letter to you um, 
in which he basically uh, is recommending um, that the board, within its discretion, can amend the traffic rules and orders. And he is recommending that what we would do is remove the word designated. So the only vehicle that could park there would have to be a registered uh, emergency vehicle. Um, and that would be a matter of a way to clarify this so that if the intent of the board is to not allow such vehicle to park either at a residence or on street, uh, this would effectively uh, do that. Uh, the body, uh, the board of selectmen, excuse me, is empowered uh, to amend uh, the traffic rule in order. Um, and once that is done, uh, there has to be publication at least once, I believe, in the Milford Daily News. Um, so that is uh, his clarification, town council's clarification. Um, rather than try to debate what the word designated means, remove it from the traffic rules in order. Um, and it then would be clear uh, that this vehicle uh, would not be, a vehicle of this type would not be permitted to park um, either at a residence or um, on the street. Yeah, Jerry's letter to us was dated July 1st. Correct. And um, I spoke to him briefly about it and he said this is the, <coughs> the way to go and he would recommend this very strongly. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of information here on tickets and uh, court and all that. Um, Brian, any comments? Um, yeah, a couple of things. Um, I'm trying to get an idea as to where, where you're at with the court case because um, I see, you know, a bunch of different things. Uh, Jerry's saying that the matter is on appeal to the what he refers to as a justice of the court, uh, your memo indicated that it looks as though the clerk magistrate on February 11th um, continued the matter for three months to allow Mr. Fernandes to pay all fines and stay compliant. Uh, apparently he has not done that. Uh, you've indicated that you're waiting for a date from Milford Court for the case to be heard from a judge. And then uh, the chief is indicating that he believes the clerk actually found probable cause and the charges were set for arraignment. So in the legal sense, that's three different scenarios. So I don't know exactly what the status is on the case. So what I'd have you do, or maybe have Jerry do it, you know, call, you know, Carrigan's office tomorrow. Um, you'd be better off catching him after one, after two o'clock. And, um, you know, just get the status on this docket, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, it could sit there, you know, it could sit there, but it sounds as though uh, it was continued for three months to pay the fines. I think the clerk has to be notified, if you haven't already done it, that that wasn't done, and then the clerk will find probable cause, issue the criminal complaint, and then Mr. Fernandes would be summoned in for arraignment. I think that's what's going on. Okay. So um, just just try either have you or Jerry or someone just coordinate with uh, Tom's office, and um, just to make sure that they're aware that that hasn't occurred, so at least the complaint can issue. Okay. Um, I can appreciate the um, frustrating nature of you know what you're trying to do here. I mean, you you refer to it as the cat and mouse game of the vehicle being parked overnight, then leaving continued, and uh, you know so forth. So. Um, you know, I applaud you for your diligence on this, and it is very, very frustrating uh, when an individual does not, does not want to comply. Um, let me ask you this, because it's talking about Ted's of Fayville. Is that, because I, I couldn't make out on the, the photos that I have, is that what's on the side of this guy's truck? Yes. Ted's yeah, of that, Fayville? Yeah, that's a towing service out of South Row and North Row whatever area has the whatever whichever town has that Fayville area yeah um, yeah I'm not sure sh sure which um, okay but that's 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 on the on the vehicle that's on the vehicle and he, and, he, and he indicated you that that's who he works for or whatever yes yeah um, I, I actually have a, a letter <coughs> in the files um, that has specifically what the, the company name is so okay. I can follow up on okay on, with you on that um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, to me, you know, I mean, Mr. Fernandez is being very cute and, you know, trying to be as convenient as it can for this, you know, 
monolithic vehicle that's that's really overwhelming that that sunset drive which is a heavy residential area there's a lot of children on that road um, most of the day it's, a, it's not a wide road and this is clearly a safety hazard and it's got to stop so I think Jerry's memo is is right on and mr. chairman I, I would be prepared to make that motion to amend the traffic rules in order to uh, delete that word designated to uh, avoid the confusion that has developed okay just hold that for one second bill any questions for John um, I, d I do um, so first of all I, I would agree that the building department has done what it needs to do in terms of resolving what's clearly a safety issue on Sunset Drive um, I wouldn't want the vehicle uh, on my small street and I don't think that the people of Sunset uh, deserve to have that vehicle there I think it's exactly what our bylaws had intended to do so I think your enforcement is spot-on and uh, Brian's suggestion that you follow up with the court to let them know that even after their order they've uh, this uh, resident mr. Fernandez has not been in compliance is important um, with that said I, I just want the people with less understanding of the issue to better understand it this is not a tow truck that one would call to pick up a Honda Accord. It's the one that comes in and picks up the big rigs. So it itself is a rig, yes. uh, yeah. a tractor trailer type uh, cab, uh, and uh, its towing capacity is far larger than any other uh, tow, tow vehicle that we would normally be accustomed to as uh, you know, regular citizens. So um, this is extreme um, as, as uh, Selectman Murray had indicated this is a small and narrow street. The people are entitled to more. Um, and this is, I think, exactly what town meeting had in mind when we talked about the, the trucks. So the, the only question I had is it related to registered emergency vehicles. How does one register an emergency vehicle? Because I, I think it's important we get this language clear. My understanding would be with the registry of motor vehicles. Okay. Uh, so, you know, not like you and I would register our car, for example. It's but it's not registered with the town in, 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 in the sense that somebody would then try to designate a vehicle as a registered emergency vehicle. But Again, I can we're talk talking about registered with the registry of motor vehicles. I believe that's okay. what it is. I because would clarification on that, but I believe that's the my, case. My read on it is this is not life safety vehicle. This isn't carrying the jaws of life. Its response in the first few seconds is not going to make the difference of life and death on a, uh, on an accident. It's basically clearing away debris and uh, property damage or a disabled vehicle. Um, but it, it is not the one that transports people. It is not the vehicle, emergency vehicle that uh, uh, would extricate people from an accident. So, in my in my view, it is it is not. Um, shouldn't be designated as an emergency vehicle and with that I'd be happy to second okay. uh, the motion that's been made and agree with uh, the motion okay motion by Brian that we uh, delete uh, the exemption so that it would be registered as an emergency vehicle not designated as an emergency vehicle and uh, moved and seconded that's unanimous because John just uh, I don't know, three or four days ago these things can happen all the time as you know once you allow something to happen there was an 18 wheeler parked on Fruit Street, you know, and who wants that, you know, in front of their house? And that's not as bad as this thing. But yeah, no, I, nobody I'm wants glad that. Glad you're on top of it. And uh, and uh, Rick, can you work with uh, John with Town Council to make sure this is uh, absolutely okay? Okay. So moved and seconded. Good work, and uh, we appreciate it. I think so. Also, Scotty, thank you again for on that Welcome. work on 11 Temple Street. Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you all. Okay. <coughs> all right next we have uh town planner how are you larry Good. all right tonight you'll be talking about the gis system comprehensive plan uh, updates and project updates we look forward to have a lot of uh interesting information in your in the pamphlet that you gave us and I brought even more. Okay, just that's in all right. case that wasn't enough paper. That's all right. Well, as, as Dino just said, he'd ask that they uh, uh, give the board a, a brief update of planning related projects over the last several months at least. Uh, some of them are actually over the last several years. So I tried to break them down 
uh, into pieces that we could easily handle. Uh, obviously, the, the geographic information system project was the first uh, that I wanted to mention. Uh, I've talked about some land use and zoning issues a, as a second uh, um, group. And then uh, finally, um, what we were really uh, intending to get to eventually was updating the uh, uh, comprehensive plan. So if, uh, uh, if I could refer you to my memo of today's date, uh, I've tried to uh, condense uh, as much as possible the uh, information on the three topics. Uh, obviously, the GIS has kind of evolved over the last few years. The first uh, component was um, the web-based GIS that everybody has access to uh, on the Internet. Um, that's an out, a direct outgrowth of the Next Gen 911 program uh, that was started back in 2010, uh, and that was to digitize all the towns uh, in the Commonwealth's uh, uh, assessors' uh, uh, parcel maps to, uh, to standardize that system and to try to begin to integrate that with uh, uh, um, dispatch services uh, around the uh, Commonwealth. And uh, since uh, 2011, once that uh, was done, uh, we've, we've been providing, uh, through a, a subscription process, the uh, free online access uh, to that information. So that would allow uh, the general public to, uh, uh, to view and map different kinds of information, primarily the assessor's maps and, and the assessor's data, but it also allows you to uh, uh, integrate using that online program uh, the ability to view uh, uh, aerial photography or to see thematic overlays uh, like wetlands or uh, floodplains, things that uh, the uh, average homeowner may, may want to uh, get a quick overview on uh, uh, just on the web from their home. Then the, um, uh, the second component is uh, somewhat tangential, but uh, uh, last year we were able to join the, the Mass Ortho uh, collaboration to buy into uh, a flyover of the town for new um, ortho uh, imagery uh, aerial photography. And that's really going to be the basis for all of the mapping going forward. Once we get that data, um, it'll need to be digitized into the system, but it's uh, highly accurate. Uh, and to the extent that you'd be able to see stop signs and telephone poles and fire plugs and a variety of things uh, that uh, the current uh, types of uh, aerial photos really don't show us. And then the third component uh, is basically what town meeting just approved. Um, and, uh, and that's the, the attachment A that you have in your packet, uh, which actually kicks off tomorrow with the uh, uh, introductory meeting to the 10 major departments in town. Uh, and then there'll be follow-up interviews by the uh, uh, GIS consultants, and that's really to uh, do the needs assessment and, and follow that up right away with an implementation plan so that we have a clue as to where we're going and, and what we really need or not and what kind of software, hardware, uh, personnel or not, uh, and, and how we would move forward. Uh, so, so that's exciting that that's finally getting going. It'll start tomorrow morning at 9.30 down here and last for about an hour. Um, I believe Larry will also receive the cost breakdown different phases that's one of the requirements in the uh, uh, in the contract is as part of the implementation uh, aspect as I promised more paper uh, so the first page will uh, We'll give you the schedule and then you can see which days and various departments uh, are getting interviewed. These would be individual interviews by the consultants with the various department heads. They've, uh, uh, the consultants have provided uh, ahead of time um, kind of an interview uh, set of uh, preparation questions so that the various departments uh, could be thinking about that. Uh, they also uh, provided a brief history, but uh, we just went over that. Uh, but this was more 
uh, again, for the, for the benefit of the uh, individ individual department heads that may or may not have been involved in our discussions uh, either here or at town meeting. So, uh, so that will really, uh, really kick things off. Um, the packet that you'd originally gotten uh, had included the, uh, the actual contract. Uh, so that'll show the breakdown of, of uh, not only what they're going to uh, investigate, but what they're going to put together in terms of an implementation plan, as I say, is for all aspects, including funding and a multi-year schedule as to, as to the best way for Milford uh, uh, to proceed uh, to the extent that we should have uh, the initial funding estimate uh, in time for a fall town meeting. Uh, and certainly we can prepare a placeholder article uh, <coughs> if you wish to insert something in, the, in that warrant. And then as this comes through, we'll be able to fine tune the actual uh, uh, dollar amounts. But the, uh, you may notice uh, on the second handout uh, that I just uh, provided, the very first interview um, is, is with the IT director. Uh, because we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, Paul's involved from the very beginning uh, with implementing this system uh, to make sure it's not in conflict with the current, any of the current IT systems uh, that are either already here or that are planned in the overall IT plan. Um, even to the extent that Paul and I had uh, discussed the potential of possibly using some of the uh, servers, uh, if necessary, uh, that, are, that have already been replaced uh, in, in the town's IT system um, in the event that that could help us get off the ground uh, for the GIS without necessarily having to go to a separate expense uh, if those types of machines are needed. So uh, again, he'll be, he'll be the very first interview after the presentation. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the, to the results of all that. Larry, are these the only people being interviewed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, those in, in our estimation, those were the departments that uh, would immediately benefit from having uh, uh, a geographic information system uh, uh, at least available to them, whether they uh, have somebody in their department or not necessarily that would, uh, uh, that would set at a computer workstation and use it. Um, they would benefit from having a geographic information system that integrated their particular bailiwick of, of information into the system. Um, obviously, other departments uh, that aren't in this interview process now could still benefit, could still, uh, uh, as, as time goes on, uh, they discover that, well, we need some information. They could make a request either to um, a town staff person, if that's the way you decide to go, or to our consultants to prepare thematic maps based on their particular information, which areas in town uh, has there been a change in valuation, or which areas in town ha has there been a change in the, a noticeable change in the condition of the properties, things like that. Uh, so even though they're not in this initial list of, I think there are 10 uh, department heads, uh, they could still benefit. Brian, Bill, any questions so far? Uh, not on the GIS, no. Okay. no. Yeah, just as it relates to the topic that Dean was just asking about, which boards uh, or departments are included in the initial um, interviews. You know, one of the things it talks about in your GIS assessment and implementation plan is the benefit this may provide for logistics associated with trash removal and trash pickup. And I don't see the Board of Health on here. Um, is there a reason for that? Well, again, this, this primarily was put together to deal with departments that right now have uh, enormous amounts of information uh, that are mapped or that some other consulting firm maps for us uh, and to get them access. But as I say, any department that would need uh, the service of a geographic information system, certainly whichever way it's done, whether it's in-house or whether it's via the consultants, uh, later on, they could provide those kinds of uh, uh, thematic maps uh, uh, to assist any department. Yeah, I, the reason why I ask is uh, generally working with consultants, when you add on and uh, not have it within the initial scope of work, it tends to get ex more expensive than, you know, when you're looking for, you know, bolt-on requirements. And, and so 
you know, in reading your documents, it talks about the benefits. And I remember this coming up before as one of the benefits as well. That's why I was surprised not to see the Board of Health. Um, and the, the other thing I want to make sure is that, that the general uh, public gets the benefit from this and has access to a lot of it. And so um, one of the things I want to make sure is that the, the IT department specifically look at not only the boards that are using it, but the aspect of public access to the data. So for example, if, if we assure ourselves that the library has the right IT infrastructure, at least in, in some workstation, not necessarily broadly available to every computer in the, in the building, but that the general public would have access to some of the information and some of the data, uh, that would be enormously helpful. Um, so if you could, that's two requests in that, in that whole discussion. One, ID, IT specifically make sure that public access um, be considered and specifically via the library. And the other piece is, I'm just surprised not, not to see the Board of Health involved in the initial interview process, and especially where I think it may help them in their contractual arrangements with uh, trash hauling and the logistics associated with that. I believe uh, you know, uh, a trash removal service, when they come in, could benefit from being able to quote that easier with the updated GIS information. And so I ask that that be included earlier in the process rather than ad hoc or later. Um, but otherwise, the, those are just, uh, I'm not picking on it as much as I've bought into the concept that it's uh, helpful. I've read your documents. When it talks about logistics and trash removal, uh, as an example, um, expect to see Board of Health there. Yeah. That's my feedback uh, as it relates to GIS. And then, of course, uh, having the uh, library up the street so that the general public could uh, access maps and some of the, uh, the broader data that uh, do it, as long as the I IT infrastructure is capable of handling it, that means if library needs an upgrade as part of this overall, that it be considered in the budget. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the concept of data security is something that the consultants uh, are going to be advising us on uh, because there will be levels of um, sure. data in, in the full-blown town-wide GIS that, that uh, uh, you don't want public access to. For instance, uh, what might be an example of that? Certain utilities, um, you know, just in, from a security standpoint, uh, you know, in this day and age, there are some levels of uh, information that uh, may be safer for the town not to make totally publicly available. We might be able to have, for instance, a thematic map that would show where uh, all of the water lines are in the, in the context of, well, is this neighborhood serviced by municipal water supply or not, versus the actual precise location, which we will have, but that may not, uh, just, this is just an example, I don't know that this is, would be it, but this would be, to my mind, an example of where uh, the general public wouldn't have the direct access to it. They certainly wouldn't have the level of access uh, that either the consultant or the, the town uh, the GIS person would have. All right, let's look uh, at it from this perspective. To change, to change the data, right now you can, you can view, uh, if, if, you, if I may, the, you can view from any uh, computer that has web access, you can view the town-wide GIS and see a number of thematic layers. And one of the things I envision that the full-blown GIS will give us is even more stuff to look at just as a member of the general public. Yeah, I can't off the top of my head come up with something that the town, the town residents wouldn't or shouldn't have access, but if, if you come up with something that's clear and makes sense, uh, um, then we ought to look at that uh, f for screening that information from general public. Right. But my first thought off the top of my head is, you know, yep. uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider it uh, proprietary and just my thought. Um, but okay. go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, the um, the uh, second category. Uh, I had uh, combined land use and zoning issues, um, and as I mentioned in the memo, uh, the cover memo again, uh, that uh, now that we're uh, approximately 80% built out, 
uh, we've tried to deal with providing economic development uh, 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 in terms of establishing uh, additional non-residential zones. And this started back uh, as early as 2001, 2002, when, uh, in fact, in a response that, that, that from Dino, um, he'd asked me uh, to have uh, the planning board and the IDC uh, look at different areas in town and uh, um, try and come up with uh, a concept or, or some method of uh, upzoning from whatever residential zones might happen to be in different areas of town. And uh, after looking at it, uh, we decided that uh, instead of necessarily finding areas that could possibly be developed as non-residential and just zoning them heavy industrial, that we came up with the business park zone um, that would encourage the high-tech research and development type of uses that the original uh, IB industrial zone had intended, but the IB industrial zone was so open that it allowed all kinds of stuff, like hotels, motels, and car dealerships, and retail, and a lot of things that aren't high-tech research and development. So we came up with the business park zone. The first application, uh, as I noted, was back in 2002 uh, for the 80 acres of the so-called Gutierrez property at uh, exit, uh, exit 20. Um, and then later, as you see in the list down, number five in the list, we applied the business park zone again to approximately 200 acres in 2009, uh, the so-called Robsham property, this now famous as potential casino site. Uh, so uh, we had uh, the ability to create a district and actually apply it to almost 300 acres of land that otherwise could have easily been developed as residential. And as you all know, there's a cost to those residential developments in term, just in terms of uh, uh, how much it costs per school age kid, depending upon how many children there are in the development. And that's a direct relationship to what kind of development is, whether it's a PRD or a conventional subdivision. So at any rate, uh, one of the major uh, accomplishments, I think, was to, for us to be able to uh, propose the business park zone uh, and town meeting uh, approved that and actually applied it to almost 300 acres. Uh, I've noted that uh, in 2005 there was a, a change uh, to the two to the two family provisions uh, for the two f in in the RA zone. Uh, so now you need a special permit if you have a house lot uh, and want to do a two family house in an RA zone between 12 and 16,000 square feet. Uh, otherwise, if you want to just do it as of right, you need 16,000 square feet. Uh, the zone uh, is an 8,000 square foot zone. Uh, lot size for a single family. So basically, it, if you want a two family without the extra requirements of the special permit, you have to have double that size. Um, in uh, 2008, we uh, updated the uh, floodplain requirements so that we could stay current with FEMA. So anybody that was in an area that uh, needed to buy flood insurance, they could. Uh, if the towns don't adopt this, people can't participate in, in, the, in the flood insurance program. Um, we updated the adult entertainment provisions in 2008. Uh, 2009, well, I already mentioned the second application of the business park. Uh, the following year, 2010, we created the office residential zoning district and applied that uh, in, in the near downtown area, uh, basically the west frontage of Congress Street. I can't see the map. <laughs> the, west, the west frontage of Congress Street from water to west. And that's the first application of that office residential zone. So it has the effect of an overlay zone, but you can actually see it on the map. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't like overlay zones, because there's usually no you know, indication on the map that it's there. Um, but the office residential zone kept all the standards for the RA two-family zoning district, but it added via special permit from the planning board uh, the potential, at least, to add uh, professional offices uh, uh, in, in certain buildings if there was going to be adequate parking on, on the, that particular site. Um, in 2012, uh, we uh, amended the zoning bylaw to eliminate the requirement, uh, the zoning requirement to get a Class II dealer's license if you were going to have unregistered vehicles on your property. So there had been concerns from this board that we had a plethora of uh, Class II licenses in town 
So we were rapidly becoming the, the used car mecca of, if not New England, at least of Massachusetts. So by, by getting the requirement out of there that, uh, that you needed to get a class two license if all you were going to do is detailed cars, um, that slowed the, the, the amount of requests you've had for class two licenses. Uh, in, again, in 2012, we added the solar energy provisions. 2013, we added the medical marijuana uh, treatment center provisions. And then over all this time, we've made uh, many amendments to the site plan review provisions to uh, expedite the process, to make sure, uh, in fact, the last uh, amendment that went to town meeting, uh, just this last town meeting, was uh, uh, to uh, formally include uh, the Commission on Disabilities uh, as one of the reviewing agencies. They've informally been in the mix uh, for a number of years, but now it's a, it's a requirement. Uh, developers can't, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, say, well, that's not, that's not required in the bylaws, so we don't have to listen to what they say, in spite of the fact that, the, you know, there are legal requirements that they're, that they're trying to get enforced as well. So that clarified that. But, uh, I think we've, uh, we've been able to do well in terms of expediting the overall process. We've probably got one of the quickest turnaround times uh, in the state uh, to do a development proposal, even if you need a special permit. So the, um, the last thing in terms of land use and zoning that I mentioned was just that uh, given the level of build out and the other constraints, um, one of the things that we would want, that we would expect a consultant to look at in an updated plan uh, would be to look at redevelopment scenarios uh, for areas of town that have been developed for a number of years, as well as uh, uh, looking at revitalizing downtown for both residential and, and non-residential uh, uh, uses. So, have yeah. Any questions or we keep going? Go ahead, then. I'll try to talk faster. So finally, the main thing that, that um, Dino would ask about was a, a potential update of the comprehensive plan. Um, as you've seen in the, in the memo, again, uh, um, it, it generally explains what the plan is, what it's supposed to do, uh, how the uh, current plan um, was put together, the fact that there were numerous uh, uh, public scoping sessions. We did a, a written survey. We had over, uh, I think it was over 700 responses to that, which is, uh, um, was a pretty good return. I don't remember the total that was sent out, but it was a, it was a high percentage. Um, and, and these were sent to, uh, uh, to registered voters, so it wasn't just mailed out to, to street address. It was to, to people that might uh, be actively involved in, in the town and town government. Um, the consultants uh, had several focus sessions beyond just the sessions that the planning board had. Um, so now that it's uh, well over 10 years old, it is appropriate to, uh, uh, to update it. Uh, I guess my, uh, my suggestion, well, it's twofold, really. Uh, I had included, uh, maybe I didn't include. I had included a matrix of some of the things that we've accomplished uh, that relate directly to the implementation section. Uh, that's attachment B from your packet. Uh, the implementation section from the uh, comp plan, so I was able to just uh, um, kind of lift uh, that format and uh, along the left-hand side you'll see check marks for the yep. various things that we've accomplished. But, um, but going forward, um, Thank you, Larry. Thank you. What the last handout uh, shows is a suggested scope of services uh, for uh, an updated comprehensive plan. 
and, and these are essentially the same elements uh, that we required uh, out of the consultant when we did the current plan back in 2003. Uh, so there are a number of uh, um, elements uh, to any comprehensive plan. Many of these come right out of state statute uh, in terms of uh, what's required in a plan or at least uh, uh, what the total uh, format should be. There are a number that are required. Uh, there are some that you don't have to do, but if you d choose to do all of them, uh, this pretty much covers it. I guess my suggestion would be that uh, uh, in the context of issues that both the Planning Board and the Industrial Development Commission have been talking about, and even this board uh, uh, over the last uh, few years, uh, the idea of updating the uh, out, very outdated uh, economic development strategy, which is 1995, I believe, um, the uh, economic development element uh, in the comprehensive plan could be expanded uh, so that it could legitimately be considered uh, an actual update of, of that old strategy. Uh, you might uh, still have an economic development element in a comprehensive plan, but it may not be as detailed as you would expect. Uh, so that would be one item that, uh, that we might want to focus on. The other would be uh, downtown redevelopment. And even our current comprehensive plan uh, talks about downtown redevelopment uh, not only in the economic development section but in the traffic section and uh, in the uh, uh, cultural resources section I believe so we would want to I would think uh, make sure that those items are or those various elements are expanded sufficiently to provide in effect uh, a downtown redevelopment strategy in the same line that you would expect to see the economic development strategy um, the other track here on all of this uh, is that uh, the Zoning Reform Act um, is in process. So uh, hopefully this session, uh, uh, it'll get passed. It's House Bill 4065. The second sheet of that last handout uh, gives you a quick overview of, of what it is, who's sponsoring it, uh, uh, a few highlights of the bill. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, may be a spin-off of this other than other than the important elements at least from planners perspectives that there's consistency between your zoning bylaw and the comprehensive plan the spin-off would be there are some uh, opt-in elements in, if the house bill passes uh, roughly as it as it stands now that there may be some state funding available some grant funding available to those towns that buy in, so to speak, to certain uh, of the opt-in issues. Uh, there may be some of those we don't want to buy into, some of them we might, um, but we don't know what that is going to be yet. Uh, so again, uh, my suggestion in terms of funding, uh, and, and Dino, as you'd mentioned earlier uh, in other conversations, it, it's, uh, uh, we're probably looking at a $200,000 uh, uh, cost to do uh, a comprehensive plan update that included those expanded elements for the economic development and downtown revitalization. And having said that, since the session isn't over, we don't know what's happening with, uh, with uh, House Bill 4065, at least as of this second. So again, uh, if, if the board wanted to move forward uh, uh, at town meeting this fall, we could, uh, we could do a placeholder um, article, funding article, uh, and we should know by a town meeting which way this is going to go. And if it looks like we can get grants, then there's a potential that we wouldn't have to use the full $200,000 to do it. But my estimation would be that that's what it's going to cost us to do it right, uh, uh, especially with those two important elements being, uh, uh, being expanded, as I suggested. So. Well, I think there's uh, been a lot of information, a lot of important information. I think this is the first time we've seen it, we've read it, so I think we should, you know, take it under advisement. The board members, I'm sure, will have input questions. Um, Larry, so, uh, thus far, what's the uh, feeling of the planning board? Have well, there we haven't met since the okay. the issue became crystallized in yeah. terms of uh, uh, me doing a report i'm sure the planning board would be uh, in favor of updating the plan okay. uh, so uh, the the typical um, 
the typical track is as we'd done the last time, that uh, to the extent that the, the selectmen would uh, support a funding article, uh, it's really the planning board's job to do it. Uh, so if, if they get the go ahead uh, in the funding, then we would hire a consultant. Uh, I'd provided some information uh, in the original packet about uh, uh, you know, how they'd proceeded previously. Uh, subcommittees we made sure that the subcommittee had at least three members of the planning board on it because every subcommittee meeting was a posted public meeting of the planning board uh, the consultants might have some other spin-off meetings for scoping sessions but every time the planning board subcommittee met we posted the meeting just as if it were a full-blown uh, uh, planning board uh, meeting with a regular planning board agenda so that you know we intentionally did that to keep the, 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 the public uh, informed, keep the process as transparent as possible. Well, the last time we did it, I mean, everybody, there were many, many people, as you said, that have worked on this, worked on this, and uh, there was discussions back and forth. Everyone, um, you know, voiced <coughs> their opinion that it had to be done because it hadn't been done since, you know, 20 years before that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And just looking at it, I, I, uh, if there are funds available, I mean, that's certainly important because money is always a, is always a concern, but I, I think, like I said, that once we uh, discuss it tonight, our questions and all that, we can maybe revisit at a future meeting and try to narrow it down and and try to uh, see where it uh, where it's going to be going. Yeah, and the timing, the funding timing on this is a little different than I, I think, at least in my perspective, it's different than the funding issues that are associated with the whole GIS process because this, this wouldn't necessarily have to be uh, a funding article this fall, although it, from my perspective, it'd be nice. I'm sure the planning board would agree, uh, but it could easily be something at the, at the annual next year. Uh, but the GIS, uh, the whole purpose of doing this study was to get a funding article for the fall. So of the two, if one needed to wait, it would be this, and that would also give us time to find out you know, if, if uh, zoning reform passes, how does that change, you know, what the scope would have to be, whatever, so. And what I liked about it, when you especially gave it to us at, at this um, meeting, you know, when you do a certain, when you do a comprehensive plan, it's not something you just put on the shelf, then you have to have an action plan. And I think the town, by the check marks that you were talking about, I, I think the town of Milford has done many of the recommendations and, and yeah. followed uh, the recommendations to because uh, it's a blueprint for the town so yeah. uh, I think it's something that should always be looked at and every so many years it should be uh, reviewed updated so hopefully we can uh, we can maybe do something with that going forward I'm sure there are things that I missed uh, that should be checked off that I didn't get checked off but for the most part that's even even if I missed some this is I think this was a pretty good uh, town's done a good job sure I think if you were to ask people what are the most important c concepts, topics, issues for the town, I think they were addressed pretty well. But that was 14 years ago, so right. this is looking over the next, you know, 10 or 15 years. Uh, Brian? Yeah, no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Larry, thank you very much for the uh, very comprehensive report. And you forced me to get my comprehensive plan out yeah. and uh, take a look at it. Um, and, and it was very interesting, you know, because there was some discussion, there is some discussion in there about the development of downtown, looking at it in a certain way. Um, many of the things were suggested. I remember I gave you a couple of articles um, that were in the uh, municipal magazine about what, you know, is going on in Marlboro and what the IDC can do and other ideas in terms of, um, you know, really kind of giving a focus to Main Street. But, you know, the most interesting, I guess, and relevant language that I found in this 2003 report related to open space. And the, the, the report is just replete with all of these references. You know, it says here on page 42, it should be noted that very few publicly owned open space parcels in Milford are permanently protected and as such they are vulnerable to future development. No private lands in Milford are currently protected by way of conservation easement or deed, though the planned residential development zoning bylaw requires all future PRDs to deed a portion of the site to the town for open space. 
And, you, you know, if you go on and, and you reference the, the survey, Larry, well, you know, in that survey, uh, over 70 percent of Milford residents placed a high value on town parks as a reason for living in Milford, and 96 percent surveyed believed it was so important to preserve open space for water or conservation needs, and 82 percent be believed that it was important or very important to preserve open space for recreational needs. You know, and, and what was true then is, is, is probably even more true now because it talks about the most significant issue facing open space in Milford back in 2003 is development pressure, which is eating away at the remaining undeveloped lands, threatening the health of wetlands and other natural resources, placing great demands on the water supply and recreational facilities. Um, it's, a real, it's a real guide as to um, permanently protecting uh, natural space. And it, and it says Milford must seriously address the dwindling availability of land in town and the lack of permanent protection for existing open spaces if they expect such spaces to continue to provide recreational opportunities and important ecological functions. Should the town fail to protect the open space that exists currently or to proactively pursue the acquisition of other significant parcels, there will be fewer and fewer open space parcels available or worth protecting. And it has as, as one of the action items to um, designate clearly significant parcels as permanently protected open space and it also referenced the uh, Consigli parcel as uh, designated as permanently protected open space. So, um, you know, I, I would like to think that this process and, I mean, funding is there. If, if, the, if, if we feel, you know, and the planning board feels that this is an important step to take, I mean, we all know that the funding is there. You know, there's, there's, there's no question about that. The question is whether or not the town actually wants to move forward. But, you know, I, I really think we ought to. And I think by, by starting this process again, which I think 11 years plus, it, it clearly needs to be revisited, um, talks about some of the major housing uh, problems as unfriendly 40Bs. Well, you know, that, that era has, you know, come and passed. There are different housing issues now. So it clearly does, you know, need to be revisited. And I think by doing so will be a real focus for the public as to what we as a community consider important for this for, for the town of Milford which I think in the recent discussions that we've had kind of got kind of got fuzzy uh, you know people I think lost lost a little bit of sight as to um, the emphasis and the importance that I think the vast majority of residents in Milford place on permanent protection for open space and you know hand in hand with this and, and I don't know you probably call the editor of the municipal advocate and, and, and told them you wanted your stories in there because you've, you've got a GIS guide here, the GIS guide for elected officials. Um, you know, it's, it shows how GIS can help solve a range of problems for public officials responding to needs of communities during a disaster and so forth. Um, you know, while, you know, the highway surveyor is here, it, it, it talks about um, what Franklin is doing to um, comply with the state and federal stormwater regulations and um, by using technical assistance from the Charles River watershed, they've uh, embarked on their program which they call S Soak It Up Franklin. So I'll be asking for, you know, an update as to, you know, how we are working with Franklin and Bellingham because, you know, we've been uh, targeted by the EPA. Uh, there's also an article in here about talking about improving water infrastructure which in so many communities including Milford is quite old and it really needs to be uh, updated but you know there's also the story in here about permanent protection for land conservation to benefit drinking water an environmentally sensitive area and it just talks about so many communities that are, that are, that are doing this uh, Cambridge protected 54 acres of watershed land uh, hand in hand with the Lincoln Rural Land Foundation. Um, you know, Wista, 500 acres. Hingham, uh, 31 acres. Westfield, 93 acres.
Now, I think Milford <coughs> is really, in some ways, ahead of these communities because we're not out there looking for money to try to buy this land and acquire it and preserve it. We have the land. So I think that the most important and sometimes painful step has already been taken. And I think we really need to finish the act and um, go forward um, and um, really revisit that, that permanent uh, preservation of environmentally sensitive land. So, you know, with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to ask that uh, we schedule for a future meeting uh, as an agenda item uh, an appointment with a representative from the uh, trustees of the reservation so that that individual can come before us, uh, talk about what that organization really does. <coughs> I think in some ways it was passed as a boogeyman, um, unfortunately so. And um, perhaps we can really increase public awareness as to the uh, danger that this land faces in the future and uh, really how an entity like that um, can help us. Um, and, and also, as I had indicated, I'd like to get an update um, as to really where we are at in terms of our stormwater <coughs> regulations. You know, what are we doing uh, along with Franklin and Bellingham, knowing that that looms on the horizon, which is a huge, huge cost to the community. And um, thirdly, I'd like to get uh, an update from the um, IDC uh, as to what action they've taken vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of the information materials that uh, I had provided some time ago. So, okay, you want it comprehensive. How's That's that? Right. Comprehensive. Let's get comprehensive. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, Dean. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't want to debate tonight the differences yeah. or benefits of uh, um, open space uh, restrictions and uh, placing our, our town uh, space in the hands of somebody else. But... Um, that's for another another evening. I think the single largest threat that Milford's had to open space is a casino, and that was private property, and not since the years that I've been on the Board of Selectmen has there been a threat to Milford's town-owned land. That said, it would take members of the board and town uh, meeting members to uh, to approve that and go along with it. So the threat, the threat is within, um, not from uh, boogeyman developers. That said, um, you know, I, what I'd like to get is uh, a breakdown of the estimation of $200,000 for um, the co comprehensive plan, um, where those dollars go, and uh, wh why we think it's 200, where we estimate those dollars to be. Um, you know, the other thing, I, I don't want anybody to think that as a result of this meeting, somebody who may be watching, that uh, the town comprehensive plan wasn't revisited. As a matter of fact, we revisit our comprehensive plan every year. Um, we adjust, we modify where appropriate, um, and uh, and update it. So um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't go back and look at it as if the world were new. I think looking at a comprehensive plan and starting from scratch is a great idea. But based on the check marks and the comprehensive plan that was provided, it looks as though we hit about 50 percent. We were about 50 percent. Uh, of the elements that were established uh, when the plan was f when first set up in 02, uh, I'm sorry, 03, uh, to now, it looks like we've, we've hit about 50% of the elements. That's based on the data and the, the information you provided. Um, so it offers a guide. I think there are aspects of it I think we could do better at, and uh, you can see, I think, some trends within the elements that areas of focus that we paid very little attention to um, so you know you know I always think we can do better and that's okay that's not criticism that's just continual improvement efforts um, but I'd like a, like to get a breakdown of that two hundred thousand dollars and um, you know with that I think um, the the interviews I think the interview process is the more important part of the whole comprehensive plan because again, we can adjust and modify. But what's important to me is we don't have a comprehensive way in which to go out and get um, our, our citizens involved and uh, their opinions noted um, without an effort like this. And uh, I've got to believe that's where some of those costs are, but you could help me by giving me a better breakdown. Um, other than that, I, I applaud the effort uh, and Dino's suggestion that we go back and uh, start fresh with a comprehensive plan, um, 
again, we've been working okay. on it every year, right? Yeah. So. Okay, we had a good discussion, a lot of good comments. We'll, Rick, we'll work together on this going forward. Also, Rick, if you could maybe call uh, Representative Fernandez, just ask him about House Bill 4065, see where it's at. Sure. If he can provide the information. And Larry, maybe you can, when you have time, maybe give us a little synopsis of the summarization of tonight's meeting and thoughts and process, processes and all that. Uh, of the of what we zoning reform? About. Oh, yeah. of tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, Larry, as always, very comprehensive. Uh, you have uh, tremendous expertise, and we appreciate all the information that you provide to us. And I think it makes it, uh, I think everyone benefits by when we talk about all these important topics. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Larry. Thank yep. you. Good job again, as always. And the paper wasn't bad, not bad. <laughs> Don't spill your coffee. All right. Oh, okay. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. With that, uh, the administrator's report, Rick. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, hopefully one of the last updates on the window project. Uh, they have now all been restored and reinstalled. Repainting of the windows uh, on the basement level and adjustments have been completed. The only thing, as you can see, the front doors have been removed and they are in the process of being restored and then they will be returned. Uh, there may be some minor adjustment of certain windows and some touch-up painting and cleaning, but uh, we're pretty much uh, almost at the end of that project, which I think has gone very well. Um, just an update, I was asked to talk about the Louisa Lake uh, weed control treatment. The initial treatment was in fact done to deal with the submersed weeds at Louisa Lake on Friday, June 20th. We have started seeing improvement. If we need further applications, they will be done um, by the company that's performing them. The next treatment will be to selectively reduce the, for lack of a better term, the floating leaf canopy. Uh, the more uh, surface uh, weeds. Uh, talking to Mike Brashani, talking to Vani, uh, town engineer, um, the process is proceeding as it should. Um, you may have also heard that we received notification from the Department of Public Health on June 27th that Bay State Relief, DBA Medicinal Metals, Medicinal, Milford Medicinals, Inc., has successfully completed the department's verification phase, which included enhanced background checks and information verification. They have now received what's called a provisional certificate of registration. The department closely reviewed the applicant's business and operational plan, investor list, source of funds and investments, and information resulting from the background checks. They now enter the inspection phase during which the department will verify that Bay State will operate in compliance with the RMD operational and security requirements. I spoke with Michael Dundas, a uh, representative of Milford Medicinals, who informed me they hope to be starting to build out in about one month. The build out will take approximately eight weeks to be followed by the growth process, which takes three to four months. He is anticipating the opening of the business around the beginning of January 2015. He has kept in continual contact with both the police chief and myself regarding their security and business plans. He also asked me to uh, let the board know he's more than willing to meet with the board to provide more detailed information and answer any questions the board might have. Uh, finally, we did receive a letter from Colonel Thomas A. Harrop of the Department of Army and Air Force that the Massachusetts National Guard has now completed its move from Milford to Hanscom uh, Air Force Base. They requested the removal of the National Guard signs. I was informed that these signs located in the Bear Hill Industrial Park are under the jurisdiction of the IDC by special permit from the ZBA. So it's my understanding the Highway Department will be removing those signs. Um, that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Brian, Chairman. any questions for uh, uh, no no questions thank you Bill no questions Mr. Chairman Rick on the number two Louisa Lake can I yeah. can we get how much we've spent so far yeah the total contract I believe is eighty five hundred but I'll verify that no no I, I think it's been like we've had this two or three years now yes okay yeah. so and um, if we I think we need a, a person to like oversee it like whether it be Mike or Varney but we need someone to. So, so look at how it's when it's done. Yep. Uh, the effectiveness of the program, because um, you know we don't go out to bid yet. I think we just we found the company. And they were pretty good right. the first year, so yep. it doesn't necessarily mean that they should have it every year. So sure. if you can designate a person to oversee it, yep. especially when the treatments are, um, then we can go from there. Okay. Sure. And on the National Guard, we just take those signs down, right? Yes. Scotty, oh, we'll just take them down. Do you have all the locations? Uh, I don't, but I can get them for you. Yep. So don't miss any? Yep. And send me a memo to take them down. Sure, yep. Okay. 
Does the IDC send that memo requesting that? Uh, they're under the jurisdiction of the IDC, so technically, yeah. But I will, I'll get that information from Larry and then forward it on and have them notify you. And Rick, I just have, uh, once again, the property on Cedar Street that yep. owned by the gas company, I mean the oil company. Over the weekend, there was an 18-wheeler parked there all day. There were two cars. I wrote down the license plate numbers. Maybe you can show these to the uh, police department. And when you do contact the owner again, I think what has to be done is that he has to post the property as private, no parking. I okay. think that would go a long way. And then, yep. you know, the grass gets higher. Yeah, we just have to try to uh, get that person to sit down with us, and yeah. and maybe there's some things that you can do with Jerry and Tom in the building commission as far as the nuisance bylaw or whatever. That's not a, just not a good situation, you know. And then I was talking to one of the police officers. Even though even though we put up new lights and all that, it would be nice if we could get well part of that lamp because the the turning radius. I think already a couple of times the 18 wheels have hit the uh, the, new light. the lighting mm -hmm. uh, post and all that. So. There's a lot of reasons now that we should, besides the aesthetics, that we should try to do something if we can, but at least apply the pressure, keep it on. Sure. Okay. Uh, Brian, anything on the old business? No. Bill? Nothing on the old business. Okay, no business. Uh, Rick, town administrator, year rent transfers? Um, yes. Uh, basically, as you know, by statute, uh, there's allowance for further transfers after approval by both the FinCom and the Board of Selectmen. Finance Committee has voted on, I believe, the seven transfers that are uh, before you and has approved them. I've enclosed copies uh, with the reasoning behind them. Uh, I think it's important to note that uh, all seven transfers are within existing appropriation. Uh, if the board has a specific question or issue with any one of them, um, I'd be happy to do my best to try to explain them. Uh, if not, then I would look for a motion, hopefully ask a motion, motion to approve. Motion. I'll, uh, I'll move to approve. Mo transfers. Motion by Brian. Bill, second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Next, the uh, Linda Clayton is asking for a block party, and this has been approved by the police chief. Is there a motion? motion? Second. Motion by uh, Brian, seconded by Bill. We never get invited to these parties, by the way. <laughs> I think they're trying to tell us. Something. We're supposed to get invited before we go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like when the restaurants come in, they say thank you, but they don't bring anything in. You know, it's always interesting. <laughs> okay, that's unanimous. And Rick, the next one, the uh, National Grid? Uh, yeah. The tree removal? Yeah, they've made a request that's their hazard tree mitigation program for a tree removal permit to remove, I think, eight trees uh, and prune one tree along West Street, uh, and they have attached a list. Uh, that they would ask uh, you to sign granting them permission to remove and or uh, prune the trees as listed um, and the type of tree uh, and you can see most of them they're either dead or have some type of decay to them so it, it's more a safety issue uh, than anything else and uh, so uh, I do have the original of that letter here for the board to sign should the board wish to to, to vote to approve I'll make a motion no to second approve. motion by Brian second by Bill oh, any discussion that's unanimous. Uh, Varney Reese has given us a comprehensive summarization of all the activities that she's been involved with, and uh, she'll be in at the next meeting to talk about all of these projects. Uh, she's doing a tremendous work. Um, okay. We have Jerry Secretary uh, Jeanette Giuliani has uh, has given her a notification. The last day of work will be August first. Um, Jerry's been very fortunate. They have, they've had Sally the City for many, many years. Tremendous legal secretary. And then with Jeanette, she's been competent, dedicated, and uh, we certainly want to wish her uh, all the best endeavors in her retirement. Is there a motion? No, I'm not going to move. Okay. <laughs> we don't want her to retire. No, I, I tried that today. She said no. She's going to do it anyway, yeah. huh? <laughs> no, she's just a great person yeah. and um, she's very, very qualified. Uh, we're really going to miss her. Yeah. Motion by Brian, second by Bill. Yeah, regretfully, yes. Yeah. And Rick, what's the uh, timetable on that? Uh, we've actually uh, posted for the position today in the Milford Daily News. So oh, before okay. the end of the month, uh, we'll set up a process whereby Jerry and myself will conduct interviews and then make a recommendation to the board. We hope to do that before the end of this month. Okay. So hopefully uh, at the next meeting or certainly the first meeting in August, the latest. Well, we received some communication from Verizon channel and programming changes I mean it seems that I don't know twice a year it goes up and then we have other changes so 
uh, I've asked Rick to contact the um, the person at Verizon to ascertain exactly what's going on with the latest notification that we received, and uh, you know, justify what they're trying to do. I mean, I think we all it's very complicated where they have Comcast or Verizon, so we'll get clarification on that, Rick. Sure, I will look into that. Yes. Okay. Uh, anything else? Not no. No. Anything else? We have uh, one item for collective bargaining with the uh, highway department, and then we will not be coming back into open session. Oh, I'll There's move. Motion by Brian. I'll second. Second by Bill. Uh, all in favor, roll call vote. Aye. Aye. And uh, unanimous, and we will not be coming back into.